Welcome back, viewers. Today, we will be testing the GAN High Low Indicator. But before we do, if you have not watched my first video and the videos after that, you need to go do that right now. Here at the Academy of Forex, we are building the best trading system possible as a team. And as a team, we will all profit from it when we are done. You can find a link to the first video down in the description below. You can also find a link to our Discord server. So that way we can all discuss testing indicators and building our trading system. And lastly, you can find a link below to TradingView. If you sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money using the link below. All right, as I said today, we will be testing the GAN High Low Indicator. But before we do, I wanted to put the indicator scoreboard up for everyone to see. So to date, we have tested 97 indicators. And out of those 97 indicators, 34 of them have been winners, which means that they have met or exceeded the 60% win-loss ratio threshold that we have set for them. The best ones so far were able to achieve a 100% win rate. Now, you need to go back and watch those videos to understand the context of how they were able to achieve that. But as we are working on building the best trading system possible, you could take any one of these 34 indicators and get out there and start potentially profitably trading the markets with them now. So go back and watch those videos, make a list of those indicators, and get out there and see what you can do with them. But stick with us here as we work on maximizing your trading profits. All right. As I said, today's indicator is the GAN High Low Indicator. Um, it is, uh, think of it as a moving average on steroids. Um, it's a pretty simple setup here. You have the GAN High Low line here. Um, it's plotted on the price action of the chart. And um, the signal uh, entries are pretty simple. When price action crosses down below, that is a signal to go short. When price action crosses up above, that is a signal to go long. Not a whole lot to it. Uh, like I said, pretty simple. And so um, we will get to testing this indicator now. See what we can get out of this thing. All right, we're plugging along here. There is the first signal right there. Broke down below. Play it out a little bit here and see what we get. Fortunately, that would have been a loss right there. Get another signal to the upside here. Not sure if that would have stopped us out. Let's measure it out here. Yes, unfortunately, would have stopped us out on that one. So two losses right off the bat there. Not, uh, not a great way to start. But that's not to say that we can't get something out of this. All right, there is next signal right there. There we go. And finally got a winner. It's plugging along here, doing its thing. This strong push down, down, down. All right, it's starting to uh, exhaust here. Um, this is a uh, price action pattern that we like to see. Strong push down, and then you get this um, this retracement here where it comes up. It appears to be failing to come down and make um, new lower lows. And so this is an area where if it can't come down and break below this area, then we would expect it to start pushing back up. Um, we haven't crossed over the line yet, and so let's see what happens. All right, there we have it. And so uh, price action didn't push back down. Does appear to be crossing up. That is really close right there. Super, super close. Let's play it one more candle. There we go. Hmm, that was interesting. Um, it did appear as though 
Uh, the GAN changed just a little bit right there. Um, hmm. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Don't like the way it, uh, it changed from that previous candle. Yeah. Anyways, we'll continue on for the moment. So there we go. We have the break of the GAN. We have price action kind of confirming after a strong push down. And so solid entry right there. I would expect this to be able to hit or take profit. Let's see. I think we got it actually on that one. We did. Enough momentum to push its way up there and get first take profit on that candle. Um, that one has not come down quite far enough yet. There we go. It did there, but I'm not sure if it stopped us out. Let's, let's measure that out. Ooh, it was close, but not quite. So we would have picked up a win on that one also. Plugging along here. There we go. Another break to the upside. Strong push up, up, up. Just no surprise. It had the strong push down. Tried to push up here. Um, lost its momentum up. Made another strong push before really taking off to the upside. Um, this happens, you know, from time to time. You get this fake out where they push it up. It really looks like it's going to start in another. A trend upwards, but then they fake you out, come down, wipe out all the stops, and then hard push back to the upside. That's why price action can be so hard to trade um, when it is price action and price action alone. And that's why I don't recommend that you attempt to trade price action by itself because you will get these moments where it looks like a perfect setup but you get faked out and they smash your stops uh, take your money and then run it back in the direction you wanted it to go in so all right it's plugging along here just kind of doing this weird bouncing along pattern here um this actually looks like it might be a cipher pattern pattern or um you know, one of those type similar patterns. You can look those up. I don't play with them a whole lot. Never had a lot of great success with them. All right, it came down, dropped below here. Turned around and shot back up. See if it stopped us out here. Nope, not quite. So we would have gotten a winning trade on that one. Not too bad. Yeah, see it did it again right there. That's a little questionable. Let's wait until we get to the end of the end of the video and find out if it is even a profitable indicator because if it's not a profitable indicator then you know it is what it is and it's going on the no list anyways but if it happens to pass the criteria um, then we're gonna have to dig into this a little bit more because it seems like it might be changing ever so slightly um, at points and so uh, all right anyways came down dropped below then shot right back up out of the top giving us a stop there and then stopping us out here if i had to guess yep 90 pips and then it drops down below does the weird changing thing again and this one does appear as though I don't know if it gave us quite 60. It's going to be close. Yep. There we go. All right. Plugging along here. 
boom, boom, boom. You got to jump back up. Um, price action like this is some of the hardest to read. You just get all this choppiness. There's not a lot of real clear defined movement in one direction or another. I mean, it pushes way up and has a strong pullback, pushes way up, has a strong pullback, makes another push up, strong pull. And then it's just chopping around all over the place. Not necessarily a ranging market, but, you know, really giving you a lot of whipsaw here. That's super dangerous when you're trying to trade price action. Again, especially if you're just reading price action alone. Shoots up and out of the gates there. Finally getting some momentum to the upside. And look how long it tried to get a strong push up. Then it finally did here. Now it's doing this uh, weird consolidation here at the top. And again, you know, people... You know, there's a lot of different patterns that, you know, people will attempt to trade, um, you know, bull flags and bear, bear flags and, you know, like I said, head and shoulders and some of the ones that we've, you know, uh, talked about here as well. And so, um, but some of them are, you know, more riskier than others. And this is a prime example of a more riskier pattern here. So if you were to let's see here, people would tell you, you know, you have this point right here, kind of roughly draw out. Then you have this point right here that you kind of roughly draw out. And then when it broke here above, that would be your signal to then start going long. And, you know, this is a risky proposition right here. It's made, even though this move back here wasn't that strong, it has definitely, you know, stair-stepped its way up, 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 and then had this really hard push up right here into more consolidation, you know, this, you know, this price action here is really starting to weaken at this point. Um, you want to catch it early in these moves. And of course, when it does this, it's hard to do that. But, you know, this is way late in the momentum. And so it's definitely questionable whether this thing, you know, could continue up or um, drop right back down. And so there we go. We see that it did push its way back up. And so, but yeah, you have to understand that the different patterns come with different levels of risk and, you know, it's, it gets dicey. There we go. Let's see. Hard, hard push down. And here's a prime example of just that, um, made this breakout and then it just dropped right straight out the bottom. Would have given us a win though. Keep plugging along here. And now you see we've had a strong push down at this point. And so again, we would be looking for um, some kind of exhaustion, some kind of indication that this move is exhausting. And it looks like it's doing it here. It's starting to make this curve here down at the bottom, starting to push up towards our um, high low line here um, no real clear price action I mean it does in theory create a double bottom but um, let's see if it crosses up above the high low right there it crosses up above the high low and so that would be a confirmation that this is a pattern this is price action exhausting itself now starting to want to push its way back up Let's see if it'll give us a win, though. Yep, it did. Not by much, at least not yet anyways, but that definitely met our 60 pips. Yep. There we go. And then it dropped right back down. 
started to bounce along the high low line. And then finally started to push its way back up. Again, super, super choppy. We're getting towards the end of the year now, so not a whole lot more left in it. There we go. Got one more win right there. All right. There we have it. We're at the end of the year. Let's add them up and see what we get out of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 signals. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 winning trades. And so um, this does meet the 60% criteria. So at the moment, it's going to go on the yes list. Um, the market isn't open at the moment of course because it is a weekend here and so um once the market does open i'm going to throw this on a shorter uh, time period like a one minute chart and i'm gonna sit and um watch it and play around with it and see if it is um see if the the way it changes um ever so slightly on um, specific signals see if that affects the signals in themselves i have a feeling it does and if it does then it's going to quickly go back to the no list <laughs> and so um not that it's on it yet but we'll kick it to the no list let's say that um Again, this is something you got to keep an eye out for when you are testing indicators. Is you know when an indicator paints, uh, when an when an indicator um, you know is is set on that specific area when that candle closes, you do not want it to move as other candles in the future are um, starting to form. Um, that's not a good thing. Um, some indicators are far worse than others at doing that, and this one was ever so slightly, but still can be problematic. Um, if it's changing the line after the candle has already um, closed out, then that means that um, you know the the signals that it's giving aren't very reliable because you can go from having a candle where it closed and the line was you know price action was below the line and then the next candle that forms and closes that line changes and now if you look back the line is um, now above that price action you know it just yeah it gets super problematic and so um, when the markets open like I said I'll throw this on a, a lower time frame it uh, dig down into it a little bit more uh, I'll basically just um, mark off the areas where it throws a signal and then watch as the future candles um, form and see if at any point in time those signals that were valid at that point go invalid um, because of you know the way it's changing. And if that's the case, then yeah, this, this one's going to be a no-go real quick. So... All right, there you have it, um, high-low indicator. We've tested it. Um, we'll tweak it or uh, uh, throw it to a little bit more scrutiny uh, here a little bit later and uh, move on to the next indicator from here. If you have not already, like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification so that way you are notified anytime I post a new video. As part of the team, it's important that you are seeing the new videos as they come out so you know what it is that we are discussing and what indicators we are testing, have tested, and have not tested. Also, like usual, there is a link below in the description to the Discord server. 
you can join us on Discord so that way we can further discuss the indicators and have discussions as we move forward building our trading system. And lastly, like usual, there is a link below to TradingView. If you like what you see whenever I use TradingView and you are interested in signing up for TradingView, if you use the link below and sign up for a paid account, you will save a little bit of money. So, all right, everybody, I will see you on the next